Hello and welcome to VGC Progress Report Episode 2. In today's episode, I kind of wanted to document my team building process uh, a little bit. Uh, and because this is a series primarily focused on my development, uh, but I also wanted to fill you guys in a little bit just to, so you know what I do during my team building process. Uh, this also will allow me to look back at it and be uh, and see how my team building process has changed. Um, so yeah, so during this team building process, I wanted to focus on expanding my playstyle. My playstyle typically is Trick Room. That's the playstyle I feel most comfortable with. So I wanted to pull myself out of that comfort zone and put me into a situation where um i'm less comfortable so not running trick room um so the first thing i wanted to start off with because i think it's it's a pretty interesting pokemon uh that came back uh, i want to start off with talonflame and the reason i wanted to start off with talonflame is because talonflame had had gotten nerfed going into generation seven but now because of the speed changes Going into Generation 8, he actually received kind of a, a little bit of a buff. Um, as well as access to the new move Dual Wind Beat. I think he's a very, very good option. Uh, like a supportive option. Um, so my Talonflame ended up being kind of more support oriented with uh, Prankster Gelwing's boosted Tailwind. Uh, dual Wing Beat, Taunt, and Protect. Taunt is kind of an option to stop uh trick room but if they also do follow me stuff with like an ndd um then that also shuts down the ndd pretty hard because the ndd can no longer uh do its follow me shenanigans it can't heal pulse can't helping hand can't safeguard etc uh so i wanted to have taunt on it um and that kind of limited the last move slot so i decided i'm not really running into a lot of things that are weak to fire that my other pokemon can't deal with so i put um so i put protect there just so that i can give it a little bit more longevity on the field uh, especially if it's facing down something like uh, a durant i can protect when it dynamaxes and go for something else on one of my other pokemon uh, or just a little bit just to figure out stuff for a best of three. Typically, I don't build ladder teams to perform well in best of ones. I do them for best of threes, and then they typically perform well in best of ones as well. The next, uh, and then to uh, support Talonflame, which is weird because Talonflame is a support mod, but to complement Talonflame, I put the new Urshifu Rapid Strike on the team, specifically G-Max. Um, even though I feel like normal is better because then it sets rain, and rain is really strong uh, on Urshifu. So that's just me um, knowing that that is weak. And that's me making the wrong call. And we'll go over how I figured that out after and do it when i show you guys some of the uh test battles that we did but um i ended up having surging strikes close combat aerial ace and i believe i rounded it out with thunder punch uh, uh or iron head and then uh i moved on and typically what i'll do is i'll do three pokemon in the ca uh in showdown uh, and i'll kind of put them all out onto a uh onto a team and then i will go back uh and edit their edit their moves or edit and then give them their ev spread and what i'll do is i'll go into the damage calc uh on uh jake jake hub i think is what it's called but the trainer tower damage calc uh, which auto levels everything to 50, which makes it very easy to calc. And then I will also use uh, the regular Pokemon Showdown calc to do the speed calculation so I can properly speed creep things. Uh, and because of Tailwind, I allowed for more complex EV spreads. So I didn't have to run max speed um, anything, really. I'm at run max speed Talonflame because Talonflame 
needed to be out speeding things. Uh, I ended up having, I think, 230 speed on Urshifu. Uh, 230 Jolly, which let me out speed max speed Dragapult at plus one, which is really nice. Um, and then the last Pokemon that I built for that was I put a Rillaboom on the team. Uh, and that Rillaboom ended up having Fake Out, U-Turn, Grassy Glide, and Woodhammer. Uh, so pretty, like, not very offensive Rillaboom, uh, which is the first kind of mistake that I made with this team, um, because I wanted to have Rillaboom as an alternate Dynamax Pokemon, and f having Max Strike, Max uh, butter Butterfly? Butterfree? Butter... Butter, butterfly, uh, and then two max uh, drum G max drum beating solos because this is G max solo boom. Uh, wasn't really great, but the I, I do like the spread on it. I was four HP, one eighty attack, four defense, two fifty two special defense, and sixty eight uh, speed. That let me live in max a max airstream from Kingdra holding a life orb, a modest uh, max airstream from Kingdra. Uh, which was which is very nice, and this is one of those Pokemon where I balanced um, by having two fifty two special defense and not HP investment. That let me live if I had two fifty two HP in comparison to no special defense investment. He ended up holding the expert belt uh, after messing around and thinking about running the weakness policy. Uh, I then switched him over to Expert Belt, was getting the same amount of KOs. I was Weakness Policy, and I was getting it without the weak uh, without needing Weakness Policy buffs. Um, Urshifu ended up holding the Life Orb, which was very nice, letting him pick up a little bit of kills. And then Talonflame, we gave the Sharp Beak just because I was going to put Life Orb, and then I remembered that would stop Gale Wing, so we were uh, Sharp Beak. Um, and then we... And then we moved on to the next three. And I was like, all right, I have one fake out Pokemon. I have no Intimidate. I don't have a Dark type. Uh, and I don't have uh, a Fighting type. So I moved on to uh, trying to figure out what I wanted from, uh, from my Dark and Fighting type. And I wanted to lump those two together uh, because. Um, I wanted to intimidate mainly, and the options were that were like a fighting type or a dark type were Scrafty or Hitmontop, and I decided to go with Scrafty uh, because Scrafty uh, has access to coaching, and so does Hitmontop. But I feel like Scrafty is a little bit better right now, especially because of its new access to Lash Out. So if it um, gets switched in on uh, with like beside Urshifu and they intimidate it, you're lashing out for a very big uh, damage number. Uh, so we went Fake Out, Lash Out, Protect, and Coaching. Uh, coaching allowed us to uh, protect some teammates, and when Scrafty really was just going to sit on the field and do nothing, it allowed me to click uh, Coaching on its allies. Um, I think now is a good time to mention, when I team build, I look to Picolytics and... I try and figure out what's being used commonly, and then I try to also figure out what my Pokemon are doing commonly. And sometimes I'll just take the uh, most common spread. I did that with Driftblum. I took the most common EV spread, uh, and I put it uh, on on my team, uh, which we'll go over Driftblum in a little bit here. But with Scrafty, I noticed that it typically ran either Assault Vest or Roselli Berry, because I was running Protect and Coaching, I could not run Assault Vest, so I put the Roselli Berry on it, and we made it max max HP and max special defense. I, that lets it live a, a max Starfall from Togekiss, I think 30% of the time, which is very handy, uh, because if that 30% does happen, then they have not killed a Pokemon with your dax, max moves. And with your max Pokemon, you're trying to get as much mileage as possible out of it, because it's a very, very game-changing uh, mechanic. Um, next we had Driftblum, and Driftblum was go is a supportive Pokemon for us. Driftblum uh, holds the Grassy Seed, has Unburden, which, proc which works very well with Rillaboom. So I kind of made another 
another lead option because right now the only leads we were going, going to be doing is Talonflame Urshifu, which doesn't match up well against every matchup. Uh, but we had Tailwind, Ally Switch, Will-O-Wisp, and Shadow Ball. Uh, originally I had Strength Sap, and then I was uh, going to be doing no damage. And because ghost types are really popular, I figured having Shadow Ball would be fine. Um, I then uh, went through the EV spread, and the EV spread ended up being 4 HP, 164 defense, 252 special attack, 4 special defense, and 84 speed. 84 speed lets us outspeed a ton with Unburden and Tailwind, uh, if not everything in the uh, I took that spread from Picolytics or the Damage Coke, so I don't know exactly what it outspeeds, but I know it is reliable to uh, outspeed a ton of things anyway. I might have to adjust that and run a little bit more speed to deal with Dragapult. Uh, and then lastly, the last Pokemon that we put on the team, I was looking for a fairy type uh, that would be able to hit like a truck. Um, I went with Azuramil, uh, or Azumaril, uh, and it has Aqua Jet, Play Rough, and Liquidation with Belly Drum. Uh, it has a kind of late game Belly Drummer, late game cleanup kind of Pokemon, and if, say, Rillaboom, Driftbloom, don't get it off right away, and I don't end up Dynamaxing, and Rillaboom dies instantly. Azu can Dynamax and just break teams in two uh, with its very, very powerful max moves. Um, so after building, I have a, quite a few overlapping types. Uh, we have two fighting types, two water types, uh, two flying types, uh, and two flying types, which isn't great leaves our team very very open to electric types to kind of run through um what i should have on this team is i should have something uh that can that can soak those hits or a lightning rod pokemon would help uh so switching scrafty to something like raichu would probably be a good idea for this team uh but we also have no special offense and you're kind of saying but driftblum's there driftblum's special offense is limited to shadow ball which isn't great um and Driftbloom's not a very effective killing Pokemon. It's going to do really well at taking out Alola Whack um, and like Gengar and Chandelure, but it doesn't really offer offensive pressure to any other Pokemon. We're also very weak to Psychic Spam. Psychic Spam is a newer archetype that's kind of popped up because uh, they're running slower, so they have their terrain up, uh, when I lead Driftbloom, Rillaboom, and they lead um, uh, their Psychic Spam lead, Psychic Surge is the one that ends up on the field, and then I'm struggling because I'm no longer in Grassy terrain, which means I can't use Grassy Glide. Rillaboom's damage output is limited, uh, but we still do get Tailwind up. However, we've lost Driftbloom and Rillaboom almost instantly because of how strong Expanding Force is. Uh, and that's something I didn't really take into account because I didn't really understand how strong Expanding Force was. Um, but I think what this what this team has taught me the most, simply in team building process, is a little bit about how Tailwind offense works uh, and what I need to kind of improve. Um, but yeah, so now we're going to go into the test battle. All right, so quickly going over the test battles that we did. Uh, I typically do about four to five test battles before I make adjustments. I take little notes on uh, what can be improved, and I take mental notes on what is working and what isn't working. Um, what I've realized during this test process is that Urshifu is not as strong as we originally thought he was going to be. Uh, so if we remember the tier list from last week, um, where I put Rillaboom and S and A, I would probably move him down to A and B now. Uh, Urshifu kind of just falls over dead to a lot of uh, special attacks, and because its main weakness is Flying, Psychic, and Fairy, most of those are uh, special-based attacks. But what I have learned is that Rillaboom Driftbloom is a very reliable lead. It lets me get my Tailwind up pretty immediately and immediately start putting pressure on teams. 
Uh, the one issue is is that Rillaboom doesn't really have a lot of offensive pressure on our team because of its access to really only hitting things with grass, uh, which isn't a great offensive typing. We've also learned that, as stated previously, Talonflame Urshifu isn't as reliable as I thought it was going to be. However, if it does lead and it does do really well, it does punish teams immensely hard for not respecting it. Uh, we can just win games instantly if, if um, they don't respect Urshifu and they don't respect Talonflame because Urshifu will get a kill pretty early on and then Talonflame will spam wing beat until it dies, uh, which is a very, very strong offense. Uh, however, we are incredibly weak to uh, Indeedy Hatterene. Uh, and Trick Room in general we're weak too, but more specifically Indeedy Hat. If they lead something that doesn't have good follow me support or ally switch support to um, bop Trick Room, uh, or to set up Trick Room, then... Uh, we can taunt it with Talonflame, and Talonflame tends to be my lead. I typically will lead Talonflame Urshifu against Trick Room teams. Uh, however, if they do have Ndidi Hat, even if they don't opt for follow me on, uh, on Ndidi, we can't taunt Hatterene because of Magic Bounce. We'll instead be taunted ourselves, so they get Trick Room up for free anyway. Um, so I think what I need to do moving forwards against Ndidi Hat is I should use Surging Strikes into Ndidi to knock it out, and then hope Wing Beat knocks out Hat. Um, or this is when I would need to switch something like Protect to Brave Bird to fully shut down Trick Room like that. The next thing that we learned was that Azumarill is a very good alternate win con. When I put it on the team, I, I knew it was going to be, but he is a very, very good alternate win con. Against a lot of teams that this team struggled with, Azu kind of went in on, um, because Azu hits very, very hard with water type attacks, and not a lot of mons in current format resist water. A lot of them are weak to water or neutral to water, and the other ones are either are neutral to fairy, so he offers very good support like that. Uh, as well as just being able to Aqua Jet and get a bunch of, like, pickup kills at the end is very nice. So something like, uh, something like that is very, very handy. Um, and then as well, we learned that coaching is a very good support move if put into a situation where I'm forced to have both, um... Uh, like, if I can't belly drum and I have to have Scrafty Azu on the field, for example, coaching into the Azu slot as we Dynamax and start spamming out moves is very reliable because Huge Power already gives Azu the boost that it needs to be a really good offensive mod. Uh, and under Trick Room, we'll go first with Scrafty most of the time uh, so that Azu gets buffed when it needs to. Um... So yeah, that's kind of what we learned from the test battles. I didn't really learn a ton. I also learned that this team's not very good. Um, and I still have a lot to learn when it comes to Tailwind teams. Uh, but I will be taking this into account next time I do team building. with, And I want to do some Tailwind stuff. But I will pretty much be focusing on trying to learn, relearn Trick Room, trick room in current uh, meta. As, and then focusing on figuring out an alternate playstyle. Uh, so yeah, I appreciate you guys for watching uh, today's episode of VGC Progress Report. As I said when I first mentioned VGC Progress Report, this is not a weekly series. It's just a coincidence that these two episodes are coming out uh, subsequent in subsequent weeks. Uh, I do not know when the next VGC Progress Report episode would be, but it is something that I wanted to let you guys know that it is not a weekly series. But as always, I will see you guys in the next episode. Peace.